Have you ever wondered how to build large wood frames for pictures or art? Well, today I'm going to show you how I built the frame and painted this painting. Most of the time when I'm building my bigger frames, I veneer the hardwood onto pine. So what I'll do is I'll get two by fours, um, any scraps that are laying around the shop, and I just glue them up. And then I mill them down and veneer the hardwood on top. The project that uh, we're working on now is three foot by five feet. So I have um, an eight foot panel here that we're gonna mill down. And then I have some other pieces in front that are for another project, but they're probably gonna make it into this video as well because I'm doing them all at the same time. Now that we got the pieces rough cut to size, we're gonna be moving on to the next step, which is planing them down. I built this pretty large planer sled for my bigger frames. Uh, I got the idea for this sled off of makesomething.com and I'll link the video on how he built this set, sled below. There's a lot of good tips and I just, I really like how this sled comes out because it's got the sandpaper on top and you don't end up having to hot glue the pieces down. It just makes it go quite a bit faster. Um, so we're gonna move on to the next step which is planing things down and um, let's go. Now that I got both sides of the wood flat, we're gonna need to get a clean edge on one side. And how I do that in my shop is with a joiner sled. I made this quite a while ago and it works great. Um, it's not big enough for the bigger pieces, but I'll show you how I do that in the next shot. Okay, so basically now that we have the pieces cut to size, we're ready to cut the veneer. I'm going to be using Ipe. Um, you can choose any wood that you like. Um, it really doesn't matter, it's totally up to you. Ipe is actually not the best wood for this type of application. It's kind of rough on your tools and glue ups are hard. It's just a super dense, um, oily wood. But I had some pieces left over from another project and I'm gonna go ahead and use it for this. So now that the pieces are all glued up, um, I've let them dry overnight. I do that just so all the globs and all the little extra things that um, squeeze out are definitely completely uh, dry. Uh, it's time to cut these, recut these on the table saw. So I cut the veneers a little bit bigger and the reason why I do that is so when it goes through the table saw, we're gonna get a nice clean edge on one side and we'll flip it around and get another cut on the other side. All right, now that we got the pieces all squared up, we're gonna head over to the table saw, get some miters cut on all the ends, and then we'll glue it up, put this panel that I have underneath the pieces um, on top, and then we'll be ready to start painting.
All right, so now we have the panel all trimmed up and we're gonna be moving on to the next step, which is paint. So I tape off the edges to make sure that no paint gets on the actual uh, hardwood and then we'll prime it. See how smooth that comes out. Possibly hit it with a little bit of sandpaper and then give it another coat of primer. And then from there, move on to all the spray paint. Before we watch the rest of the video, I'd like to thank you for watching so far. If you like what you're seeing, hit the subscribe button and the bell for reminders. I'm also selling merch under the Empathy Project where 100% of all profits go back into bringing more empathy into our world. The last part of the video is set up as a time lapse. At the end of the time lapse, I'm gonna talk about the materials I use and a few other things. Thank you for watching so far and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. paint that I use and what I used in this video. The spray paint that I used in the video was Belton and I love Belton. It's a great brand, tons of colors, it's perfect for exterior, lasts a really long time. I use it for almost all of my murals. It's just an all around great product and I don't really have anything bad to say about it. The stencil cap that I used in this video is by Crewline and basically what this does is it gets things down to more or less like an airbrush. You're able to spray those very thin lines and get super high detail. I use this for like paint splatter or really high details. There's just a ton of different ways that you can use this. In my opinion, this is the best stencil cap on the market. There are just a ton of different caps that you can use for spray paint, too much to go over. I'll leave a link in the description below on where you can get them. And really it's just kind of a trial and error pick out some that you think you might like, try them on the cans and they'll either work really well or they won't. You kind of just have to work back and forth to find what's gonna work best for you. The other types of spray paint that I use are Montana Black, Montana Gold. And these are what I mainly use for my gallery work. I have a set color palette that I like to use. Um, and so I found it within these two brands of spray paint. Um, I use this for other things as well. Sometimes I use them for murals. It's good for canvases. It's kind of the high-end uh, brand out there, so it costs quite a bit more. 
but it's worth it if you're willing to pay the price. The colors are super vibrant. Um, they do last a long time on anything exterior. So it's a good option if you're trying to even go up a little bit from this Belton. We also have this water-based paint, and this is a perfect brand for any interior projects you might have. Low odor, easy cleanup. There are some downsides. It's water-based, so it takes longer to dry. Uh, it doesn't spray as clean, and it drips a lot easier. But it's perfect once you get kind of the hang of using it. It's quite a bit different than these brands. Um, but again, it's non-toxic. It's perfect for indoors. I actually used this on a project where I painted a big mural indoors and there was a team of people on computers about 15 feet away with no problems whatsoever. For my epoxy, I just use Parks. You can get this at any home store. Uh, there are tons of different brands of epoxy out there. I use this because I don't have a lot of, I don't use it for a lot of projects, so I don't need a lot of resin on stock. But when I do, it's just a quick grab from the store, works great, doesn't get super hot, so there's no like issues with the paint, um, and it always looks great whenever I put it over any of my work. Never had any problems with it. But if you're looking into wanting to put resin over your art, I would definitely check out what is out there because there's tons of options. This is just something I know that works and it's an easy grab. Now it's time for the big reveal. Ew, 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 ew.